Hope this comes out with using the uh, Sony video camera. My Samsung S8 smartphone seems to be plagued like the Apple products. As soon as it's warm outside, you pull this phone out and try to record video with it. Um, you'll get maybe 30 seconds or so before you get the stupid warning that the phone is too hot. And it just interrupted my video. So basically I got our 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan here. Looks like it needs just a pinch of the refrigerant. Haven't uh, touched it in the last four years, so probably just needs a few ounces. I got my Testo 557 digital manifold hooked up. Also I have laying out here my Testo um, other refrigeration set. This has the little discrete pressure transducers. Um, and temperature thermometers, clamp-on probes. Got the two of each in this set. I cut the foam here so I could take the uh, air temperature probe from this air uh, test set and keep it in with this bag because I use it a lot for testing duct temperatures. Right now it's showing the uh, pressures here. And by the way, this is a Samsung Kids tablet. Um, yeah, it's one of the only tablets this size I could get to work that would read all my probes. That Samsung uh, Tab A would not work. So this is the Tab E, which is supposed to be a, a lower end one, but it's actually working. So this is reading my manifold. It's you can see it can trend. We'll build a table, which looks pretty cool when you bring this into Excel. Um, if you export what you got, so you can save Excel. And um, oop, that was export. Exports to send. So it looks like we got 46 PSI on the low, uh, which converts to 50 degrees, but almost 90 degrees on the suction. My uh, probes are, you know, it is hard to get an accurate reading when you have hot air blowing out from the radiator under the engine bay. So that's why the su super subcooling is like negative. It's because it's, the liquid line's reading higher than it should be, so it's blanked that out. The suction probe, I have this towel kind of wrapped around so, and that line isn't all that cool, so it's probably adding a few degrees to this reading. But I'm just going to add just a few ounces, I think, and see if I can get that corrected. You, the one thing about the Testo is you have to use two different apps. I'm trying to avoid the sun glare here. So, you got the one app for the uh, manifold, and then for the smart probes, any of these probes, you have to use the smart probes app. Let's see if it's still connected. It is. 58 degrees is what it's blowing into the cab. which is this Testo 405i right there. So, van still cools. It just doesn't seem to quite be as good as it used to be. So I'm just gonna add a few ounces of refrigerant. And you know, I blew a little bit of refrigerant from the system backwards to purge my hose before I connected the tank. And it's got that yellow dye look into it. It's almost like the factory put dye in this system. It smells like it too. So that's just interesting. Maybe somebody's uh, heard of that when it comes to the Dodge products. That's just weird. I just uh, pushed the probe a little further back and then wrapped it a little more. Because at 90 degrees that wasn't accurate. That might be a little more accurate there. Got about 33 degrees super heat. Car um, AC systems, uh, there's no real norm to them. It's nothing like a regular, uh, you know, rooftop unit or split system on a house or anything. Um, in fact, that the, the load varies so much. I mean, they, I mean, they start with a hot box, basically. Anyway, it's worked on walk-in coolers. We start a walk-in when it's like 90 degrees in its box. Um, you pretty much got to keep water blow, spraying on the condenser to even keep it online. So cars, I mean, they run in a brutal environment. They actually, you know, run in with 115 degrees outside. And, and the inside starting out that hot when you first start the engine and put it in AC, so. It's down below 30 degrees of superheat now. 27, just a pinch. I'm just putting like an ounce in at a time or so. This is a dual EVAP system. 57 degrees. Now another little um, thing about vehicles is when they're idling, they're not. It's not as cool as when you're driving, and that is because the RPMs 
the compressor goes up in capacity when you raise the engine RPM. So you're lucky to get the air into the 50s at an idle on many vehicles. This Samsung tablet's not that powerful. My uh, S8 phone, the one that overheats here, <laughs> it will split screen. The uh, apps, but it's buggy. So actually I don't want to turn those apps on because it might conflict with uh, this one. Seventy four degree suction it's starting to fall, less than twenty degrees superheat. Still about fifty seven degrees on uh, supply air. Try to go into the cool house here and see if it still has a connection. Uh, in general, so far, these uh, don't seem to be able to take your devices too far away from the Testo equipment. But, uh, I'm in here in a kitchen, the garage over there, so. Superheat's creeping up a little bit more. It's, it's probably throttling or something. It's back to the smart probe app. Yeah, it's not connected to that no more. That probe there seems to have a pretty weak transmitter. I notice when I go on the other side of an AC unit, it will drop out often. Sometimes I'll just close the app too. Restart it, see if it, uh, yeah, and it got it. So it's blowing about 56, 55 degree air. So I'm probably not gonna add any more refrigerant. I just added a couple ounces just to, because it probably lost a couple, I'm sure, in the last almost four years. Three hundred on the high side. That's pretty typical here in Arizona. So that's pretty much my setup. These are pretty cool. It's got a, you know, that wet bulb and. Thermometer also has the one that's in there that can measure like feet per minute and feet per second. This is infrared. It's kind of interesting. You have to have it paired to like your phone or something to even read it, but that's just the way it works. And this is a, like I guess to calculate CFM is a fan and it's like really sensitive to air movement. See? Pair. Oh, I've never used it. Look at that plastic was still in there preventing the battery contact. Never used that tool. Show you how it pairs here. There it goes. And when you first pair everything, it's in like, you know, metric system. So you got to go in here, edit view, change it to what we use here, feet per minute in Fahrenheit. So I didn't know this had a temperature it built into this. That's interesting. <laughs> Feet per minute from the radiator fan. Ooh, it's too hot for me to hold my hand down there. But that was moving. It was like 1200. Wow. And then to turn it off, you just push and hold for like three seconds. And then that device disappears. Pretty cool set. It's about a thousand bucks I have sitting here. 1100 or so now because <laughs> I'm gonna just this is just I've got this tablet just to use with this stuff so um, I don't have to use my phone one interesting thing here about using uh, the refrigeration stuff here is that, so you go in a trending see it was all reading it leveled off so it, I had it busy so basically if you leave you're trying to uh, tr get a trend you know and make a log on a system and I was using my phone every time someone like interrupted it with a message or a, such a phone call and you answer it you would interrupt your uh, logging so that sucked and it made it hard for me to get a good log on this big train ERU the other day so I was I'm, now I've got this and I'm going to keep this um, with my testo here just dedicated for um, logging so, anyway that's pretty much it just want to show you kind of some of the new tools I got I resisted the uh, digital manifolds at first. I'm like, eh, 
And we're old school. We use, you know, analog gauges and we uh, convert with a chart, you know. <laughs> but once all that you start uh, using other refrigerants like 407C and other oddballs, um, you can kind of appreciate just taking this and selecting the refrigerant and have it doing all the calculations for you. Just show you also what I've done with this set. Basically, I have the uh, automatic low loss hoses on my Testo. Um, and then the, I just keep like this style, you know, for when I need them, with the balls. But I like this in general because you don't get as much refrigerant blown out. It's a lot easier to put on. I modified this. I, I took and cut. I snipped out a bunch of plastic so I could run my hoses in here and that hose comes through there and I kind of just strategically lay it in here um, with my uh, got my uh, sensors. This is a, also this Testo uses a remote um, micron gauge that you plug into it so it's a real accurate micron gauge having it that way instead of built in. Anyway I have the hoses and I have it just set up just right where I could just get that all to close up. like that but for generally just checking out units I'm using just this which is the little uh, Testo refrigeration set showing you with the probes and like I said I cut this foam so I could take this air temperature probe and, and keep it in here also it's it's out of this other set but I don't use hardly anything out of this except for that one probe so I'm always using these to check out a unit so this is just small enough to fit into the supplier return hole you know where they do the air balancing there's usually a hole that big on our commercial units and it just fits in there so I've been keeping that in here like that and if I'm careful I can you know just put like this tablet in there and um, can't do it with one hand but I can keep the tablet in there or just keep it in the work vehicle. Seems to work out either way.